What's good everybody, Chris here again. Chris Goes Outdoors. Today in this video we're going to talk about the quilt that I started the Colorado Trail out with. Keyword, started. <laughs> the Nemo Banshee 20. Gonna talk about how the quilt performed for me, its pros and cons, jump right into it. So most people are probably pretty familiar with backpacking quilts by now anyway. It differs from a sleeping bag in that it's more kind of like a blanket and there's no real back to it. The whole thought is use your sleeping pad underneath you for the warmth underneath you and you save some weight that way. The way this differentiates from typical backpacking quilts, most of them have little attachment points right here so you can put a strap around your pad and hook the quilt to the pad. This one, however, kind of doubles almost as a full sleeping bag and you can zip it up entirely right here. That's just the, the basic overview. It's supposed to be rated to 20 degrees. We'll talk about that in a minute. As far as pros of the quilt, fabric choice. I actually love the fabric on this. It's extremely, extremely comfortable. Some of the lighter weight quilts, in particular my Enlightened Equipment one that I used on the AT, I felt like if it were ever humid out and you got sweaty, the fabric felt very, very sticky. I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head what they use for this. I'll try to put it down below, but the fabric itself feels really great and uh, it was really nice to sleep in. I didn't feel like I was sticking to it, getting all gross and whatnot in there. And held up for, I don't know, the 10 or so days that I had it out on the trail. I used it for one night out in the whites as well. Um, you might see this, we'll talk about this in a minute. I also dig the overall design. So I chose this quilt specifically because it is a backpacking quilt, but I really, really like the idea of the zipper to fully cinch it up when it's really cold out and kind of lock all the warmth in just like a sleeping bag. I feel like in really cold weather, sleeping bags just kill it. Strap systems are okay, but to me, I just kind of prefer the zipper idea and I really wanted to give that a shot. And that was kind of a big thing for me, the versatility of this. So being able to use it as a quilt and then be able to zip it up fully when it's like really cold out and try to keep all of that warmth in, I thought that was a really cool idea. And uh, I dig it. There's a couple other companies that have a similar type of design. We'll talk about them in a bit. So unfortunately, that is kind of where the pros stop for this quilt for me. This quilt did not work out at all for me. As I said, I started the Colorado Trail with this. I did not finish the Colorado Trail with this quilt. The temperature rating of this quilt, 20 degrees, is severely <laughs> optimistic. I was taking this down into say the low 40s, high 30s on many of the nights on the Colorado Trail when I had it out. I had it out there I think 10 days and it just was not adequate. So 40s and high 30s, I was wearing underwear, long underwear, the Patagonia Capilene Thermal Weight, my Melly, and my uh, Mountain Harbor Ghost Whisper with a fleece hat a lot of the times and I was still cold out on the trail. 20 degrees, I think, is like an absolute survivability rating, maybe, with this quilt. I was quite cold, and I consider myself a pretty warm sleeper. And I was also using the same pad I used on the Appalachian Trail, the Thermarest, the Neo Air X Lite, which the R value should have been perfect to handle those type of temperatures. I don't think it was the sleeping pad at all, I genuinely think. The quilt is just not sufficient to 20 degrees. You might be able to get 40s with layers, but 20s, you're gonna need like a, a full on like snowsuit or something to keep you warm underneath. And with that said, I have a feeling that the temperature rating might be due to missing down. So I went and looked at the actual quilt, and if I hold it up to the sunlight, there are sections of the quilt that appear to be missing like entire sections of down. Like there's actual gaps where there's like complete open space. It was weird in that I thought maybe, you know, I could just redistribute it through the little baffles here, but I couldn't. I know on some of the quilts you can kind of shift it down around. I could not do that with this quilt without making other sections of the same baffle have like big open spaces. And that's unfortunate. It seems that it's just either underfilled or they just completely messed up. Maybe this one. So I think the issue with this bag and perhaps the temperature rating might have to do with the actual amount of down in the bag. So it says on Nemo's website that they use 13 ounces of 850 fill power down and I just think that it must be insufficient. I mean, I can see actual gaps in this quilt. When you compare it to other options on the market, uh, specifically, we'll go to my notes here, 
the Feathered Friends Flicker Ultralight Regular. So that sleeping bag is rated to 20 degrees and is about the same size, like measurements, as the Nemo. So they use 14.7 ounces of down, but they're also using 950 plus fill power down. So it's a substantially fluffier down. It's supposed to be significantly warmer for the ounces. So they're using two, almost two more ounces of down than Nemo's using in theirs. Uh, and if you look at the Enlightened Equipment Convert in the regular wide, they use 850 fill power down as well, but they're using 19.7 ounces of down. So that's almost, it's 6.7 more ounces of down in the same rated bag. That's, that's a significant, significant amount of down difference. I just feel like this sleeping bag in general is like severely, severely underfilled for the actual temperature they're going for. And it just didn't work, <laughs> didn't work well at all. Even when I tried to use this in sleeping bag mode, for some reason it was actually colder than just leaving it open. And that might have to do with my overall size and just build. I'm a kind of bigger guy, but I thought I fit in here pretty well and I didn't seem to really be compressing any of the down when I zipped it up into sleeping bag mode, but is that possible? Sure. But when I zipped this up into sleeping bag mode and slept like that, I felt like I could feel air just going right through the bag, like cold spots all over my body. So the sleeping bag mode somehow, which is supposed to make it warmer, was making it colder. And then the zipper for sleeping bag mode is supposed to be non-snag, but it's always snag. <laughs> if you run your finger in front of it while you're zipping, it can be better. But if you're trying to actually just use the zipper, it always snags. So look at that. Like even just trying to get it back down, it just snagged on something. So the anti-snag zipper uh, is not very anti-snag at all. It works sometimes, but if you try to like run it, especially when you're trying to squeeze in the bag and zip it up, it's gonna get stuck. The foot box of the quilt as well, it's nice in that it does close it up fully. I saw, I forget what website it was, but they showed some ridiculous way that the guy had closed the bag, <laughs> like the foot end of the bag, and was like, this is the stupidest design ever. And it was because I believe he was closing it wrong. If I can ever unzip it, I'll try to show you. So at the bottom of the bag, there is this little lock right here. You can see that there's a little collar here on the bag as well. So if you zip the end up, the collar sticks out like this. You can fold that collar in to the bag. So the guy that was initially reviewing it literally just cinched it up like this and left this like hanging out. The actual thing works pretty well. So if you tuck the collar in and then tighten this string right here, it creates a very tight seal there so that there is no air coming through. And I have to admit, this actually worked pretty well with the exception of the design here. So this little tensioner or line lock or whatever you wanna call it is just simply not sufficient to keep it closed. So I found through the night while I was like tossing and turning around that this would slowly start to shift down because it just isn't tight enough on this like very thin string. So I would have to tighten it, tension it, and then throw in a little knot, and then it would stay tight there. So the foot box design I think is okay, but they could really, really do with uh, some type of different fastening device down there to keep it nice and tight and uh, make sure that it doesn't open on you. Also on the quilt, there are sections where feathers are escaping. There's some right down here and sporadically, they just randomly seem to pop out. That should not be the case for a quilt of this price. Feathers escaping, like one, two here or there, but there are significant feathers leaking from this baffle right here. And then we come to the price. This quilt is priced at $370, and for that price, it's, it's simply just not worth it. There are significantly better options on the market, but I feel like they kind of price this thinking that people will mostly buy it when one of those like 20% coupons come out for, you know, all the backpacking sites like they always do. I gotta say, even with that 20% off coupon, I would argue the quilt is still not worth it at that price. There are significantly better options and even nicer budget options. Uh, you could take a look at UGQ's quilts, their little budget line. Enlightened Equipment has their uh, 
uh, off the shelf, they call it. Hammock gear has their like budget line now. There are significantly better options on the market for the price you're gonna pay, even on sale for this. And it's tough to say. I don't like bringing down the companies, especially the big ones that are trying stuff new. Like REI just came out with their quilt as well, and I've heard nothing but good things about that. And this, in general, seems like a pretty good design. And it seems like it could work, but they really need to address, apparently, some stitching issues. They really need to address the downfill. And I think if they address the foot box, that's kind of a lesser issue. Um, you know, tying a quick little knot on there wasn't that big of a deal. And the anti-snag zipper, I could get in there and out of there. Not really much of an issue. Like I said, if you use your finger and slide it down, zips up pretty easily, but it's kind of difficult when you're in the bag, all sandwiched, trying to get out of the bag. But the zipper and foot box are the least of my concerns. The price is pretty high for what you're getting. The temperature rating and downfill quite literally are just not sufficient. I don't really not recommend things ever, but I cannot look at someone in the eye and seriously recommend them this quilt. So unfortunate, but it is what it is. If for some reason you still want to get it, go ahead, <laughs> but I can't recommend it. I mean, unless you're planning to use it in temperatures above 40 degrees, I still think that there are better options on the market for you and uh, you can also get them cheaper most of the time. So anyways, I hope the video was helpful. Nemo, if you see this, I hope you consider it a critique and I hope you make some improvements on this thing, Banshee 2.0. With that said, if you liked the video, drop it a like. If you loved it, consider commenting and subscribing. You can follow me on Instagram if you care to. Chris goes outdoors. Don't feel obligated. Social media, very lame. And that's gonna do it, everyone. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.